chasing that big bag. Nobody rhyming that clutch in the fire on. My younger day wants on ride for He mugging we up and I hope that the. What it do with your boy OTC Rope and welcome back to Real Reviews, man. Welcome back to the channel. Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Roast, dislike, do the most, man. Hit the notification button so you know when your boy is uploading, man. Hashtag rude ones in the comment section for a shout out on Friday and every Friday after that, man. Anyways, man, like I've been telling y'all, live streaming September 7th, right here. It's going down. You don't need to go nowhere else. We're going to have an album. We're going to be live streaming it. We're going to be pausing. We're going to be playing tracks back. We're going to be giving it the, you know what I'm saying, the this or the this. You know what I'm saying? Either way, we're going to have it here. Suicide Boys, brand new album. Shout out to Suicide Boys. Now, if you know me personally, you know one of my favorite things is documentaries and interviews. You know what I'm saying? I love documentaries. I love interviews. So when I can get rappers to sit down and, you know what I'm saying, really take take pieces apart from them we're gonna do that open space suicide boys mass appeal here we go man ruby cherry uh aka many other names from seventh ward new Orleans, louisiana down south this is my cousin and my partner my lifelong blood brother six law aka scrim north side shawty and a bunch of other names i don't remember because i'm high actually, as fuck right a, now uh he had a holiday yesterday <laughs> Started a band at 13, been playing live music and punk bands since then. It got really frustrating after 12 years of never amounting to nothing. So I called my cousin up and I was like, let's make rap music. I, I, I just want to point something out. The rock scene and the punk scene, that, that's hard to get into, man. That's a, that's a hard genre of music to step into because a lot of it sounds the same but you can have a, like a little pitch or over a little you know what i'm saying flavor twist to it so that's really hard to get into rap rap is rap man there's, there's different type of rap for everybody but rock and punk that's really hard that, that that type of genre so if you can get into that more power to you I started out djing then i went to hosting like mixtapes like dj drama type shit i had like drops and shit like that went from that I used to be obsessed with T-Pain, so long story short, I found out he made a couple songs like I'm In Love With A Stripper on GarageBand on his back, and I was like a fucking big pill dealer at the time, so I left instantly, went bought a Mac, and started making beats at 19 years old, shitty as fuck. And then low-key, I've actually never told anybody this, but I started getting, I mean, I don't make beats for the group, but I started producing you know, through him. Because I, sh I saw him doing it and I was like, dude, how do you do this? And he showed me and I was like, oh shit, it's lit. Like, I got this. No, nah, but I was garbage at first. And we then. Both, we both were, bro. Like, but uh, yeah, over time, I got signed to like an in house deal with Universal. Once again, bro, y'all, y'all like me. Y'all like me. Most of y'all like me have found, a, you know what I'm saying, a liking to the channel because over here we're honest. The reason I like the Suicide Boys, their music, your music aside, I, I, it's, it's hella rappers. Their music trash to me. But as a person, I fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Their music, no, I'm not feeling that. But as a person, when somebody's honest, I can I can, I can relate to that. And, and you're saying brutally honest, man, be honest about yourself. they saying, bro, we were trash at first. Straight up buns. And everybody was when they started that something. Nobody was good at something they tried the first time. Everybody was ass. Everybody. So Republic, you know, it was just like an in-house producer where I got really screwed over all the time, just being young and signing something. And then uh, while I was bored, I would make like mixtapes and shit rapping because Waka Flocka heavily influenced that. Like he would literally do a mixtape like. A fucking 30 song mixtape with all original beats by him in like two days and then two days later drop another 30 song mixtape <laughs> and i called him like whoa, whoa whoa slow down bro all this shit is fire and nobody knows it exists i was like let's make some videos let's drop some singles let's right now i was like shut the fuck up the pack it was like pretty much like cutting the hand bleeding 
packed like this is our last chance there's no fucking there's no second option there's like no plan b if this I know why Scrim got them glasses on, boy. He probably high as hell, bro. You can tell by the way he talking. Ruby seemed like he high, but he a little more stable with his high. That boy Scrim is gone, boy. He take them glasses off. His eyes going to be looking this way. It doesn't happen by the time I'm fucking 30, and that's pushing it. <laughs> this doesn't happen by the time I'm 30. Like, I'm blowing my head off. Because no offense to anybody who works out of five, but I, I, I can't spend the yeah, no of disrespect. Life, to anyone, but I know that this is probably the only life that I get, and I'd like to leave my mark. The whole suicide thing is like, it's, it's, a lot of people take it as being like emo or depressed music or negative music, but it's, actually, it's really just connecting. It's therapy. The it's music. more positive music. Right. I know the, the actual... I want to let you know you're not alone, sorry. No, you're good. The, the actual, like, substance of the lyrics is, yeah, depressing as shit, but... If you're feeling depressed as fuck and you listen to that song, you definitely will feel a lot better knowing that somebody is going through the same shit, if not even worse. The thing is, I saw this. Okay. I, I, <clears throat> I can see that because suicide and depression, you know what I'm saying, kind of hand in hand. And if there's somebody out there who's like, dang, bro, I'm out here alone. And they hear the suicide was like, oh, shoot, these dudes, they went through the same thing. I'm going. That's Every single rapper, that's every single artist, that's ball players, that's entertainers, man. If you can connect with somebody, bro, it's gonna be easy, and a lot of people can con connect with the suicidal thoughts and depression. You know what I'm saying? That's your boy TC Raw. I never, I've never had one suicidal thought, and I've never been depressed. You know what I'm saying? Just that's just the person I am. I've been sad before, but it's the difference between being sad and depressed. But you know what I'm saying? When you can relate to somebody, it's always a plus. I'm going on like these these punk aesthetics and the rap music and this I'm broke and I don't give a fuck type shit. And I was like, wait, this is what's going on in yeah, underground rap right now? Like, this is me. I can fucking destroy this shit. Like, these kids don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, because we're older. These yeah. kids are like, at the time, 19, 20. What fucking life but experience I think that do you have? Us. Like, I think that helps. No, I think it definitely helps us because me and you have been through some fucking shit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We honestly came from kind of like rough childhoods. Our family's got a lot of drama that comes with it. And being raised as a kid, seeing, you know, your people constantly fighting and some, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go into details, but other fucked up shit, like, it has a toll on you when you're 10 years old. And I know with him, it was probably twice as bad as it was with me. Plus, he was living in uh, financially uh what, lower income yeah low income homes basically like it was like the project almost the projects yeah i was I, I didn't really have like the childhood that every every child had you know i had a i had a fucked he was up childhood taught to work for his shit and i was taught i have a foreign dad who's not from here so he was taught me very old school ideas right. and I'm not going to give you shit son like if you want some money go work he's the one that made me believe in myself and like think like, yo, you can do this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Introduce me to the Both law of Both of our attraction. fathers have been very supportive, which I know is a rare thing, but I'm, I couldn't be any other. Pissed at times, but very. <laughs> I'm talking about the times I was like a 25-year-old junkie on his couch. Oh, uh, yeah, that's He's like, you're running my fucking electricity bill up in that studio. Yeah, I had gotten arrested twice when I was 19, and my dad was like, you're going to come work at the restaurant. I was like, <laughs> fuck. Our moms are sisters, and whenever me and him would get together, some shit would which happen. Which was a lot. Some shit would happen, like just stupid kid shit, or like burning down some shit, like breaking some shit, like getting in fights. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that that's 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 funny, man. Because I had a cousin, and every time he come around, every time he come around, bro, you had to hide the knives, extension cords, anything that can be used swinging or, or as a weapon. But we just go outside and find that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Man, we used to get in some trouble with that dude, bro. I'm not even going to say his name, but God damn. Story time, man. That's for later. Whatever. Um, so, the whole nine, bro. And the thing is with our, our moms, like, my mom would blame him and his mom. Be like, <laughs> they're not a good influence. And his mom would blame my mom and me. And be like, he's not a good influence. And we both just, at some point said, you know what? Fuck you, mom. <laughs> nah, yeah, we grew up. And, and, yeah, the moms chilled out and all that shit, you know. <laughs> Me and him were raised on cash money from our moms being from like... 3-6 Mafia, heavy. 3-6 Mafia. 
Um, and then I got kind of out of the rap because I didn't like the commercial, the materialistic bullshit of it. So I started listening to punk rock. Long story short, Wu-Tang Clan and N.W.A. got me back into the shit. Yeah, he came to my studio and he would, he would never so rap. He used me, like fuck. when we started, made that pack, he was trying to push me first. Then he came in the studio and started working on his shit and like rapped this fucking three hook, three verse. Like the verses must have been like 32 bars. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Like that he had recited song, right? over and over for five years, but he was so he was so self conscious to let anything out, and I just like stopped the shit, turned around, and looked at him, and I was like, "What in the fuck? Why am I rapping?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The thing that makes us click so well is the fact that I was more into like the lyrical '90s hip hop boom bap shit and uh, older stuff, point. like even West Coast shit, like Souls of Mischief, the way they flowed on the track. He made stuff. me dig deep. And like, and he made me dig not so deep, cause he was into the Waka, the Keith, the fucking Lex Luger beats, like the trap shit, which I didn't understand. Listening to this intellectual shit, I was like, this is trash. <laughs> but then he really kind of explained to me like why it's actually really fucking good, and we kind of just blend both styles into one. I seen this start to increase with. Our first couple mixtapes, Grey Grey and Seven Saint Tammany, Young Death of the Life. We're getting some recognition finally. Yeah, but then when Southside Suicide dropped, it was like, whoa, I had never seen anything like that. And the thing is, it was perfect timing because we did Southside Suicide before we had done our two or three biggest mixtapes. And when we did Southside Suicide, I had gotten dumped by my girlfriend of five years. So... From that point on, the recording process, he was working on getting sober, battling his demons. I was battling, like, the emptiness inside of me. So I told him, like, yo, let's write from the heart. Let's write what we're going through. And the last three mixtapes after that was just so, like, yeah. powerful, like, what we were saying. And really? So everything? Vulnerable, like, what we yeah. were saying about ourselves, which is rare in rap. I think that's where, we found our, that's where we found our niche, right there. Yeah, we kind of... Like that makes sense, bro. When you can, as a rapper, when you can break out of your shell and, and and just own up to your mistakes, like Eminem has done, like Fifty used to do, like they do. Now people are saying, "Oh, that dude's real," because what he's talking about, he's talking about himself. He's exposing himself so nobody else has to. Okay, I'm fucking with this dude. Oh, this is what rap is. Well, fuck this. We're gonna go over fuck this the cars, fuck and, the diamonds. We whatever. don't care about the materialism. We don't care about all that bullshit. And now, because of that, we feel like we have a whole family. Like when you mentioned G Five, I mean, look, the people that pay to, to come see me. I look at every single one of those people as as family. Like, like fuck a fan, yeah. fuck like any of that. They're like, our brothers. They're our yeah, sisters. I take every bit of time. We take every bit of time to email them back. It was it was able to make us connect because nobody was talking about that in hip hop. Nobody was talking about depression or addiction. And if they did, their that. voices weren't very loud, you know. Right, right. Literally every mixtape is like what we were going through in those three months. Like, and it's crazy because it changes because the first one was like, I hate my fucking life. I have no money. This sucks. Nobody likes my music. And now it's to where it's like. Everybody likes my music, but I really kind of still hate my life and all this game <laughs> shit. Not sucks. Change. Like, yeah. If anything got worse. If there is anything, like, money really does not buy you happiness. Nah, man. I've got more money than I had back then, and I'm still a miserable piece of shit, so. <laughs> we are That's one goal thing. Is to be oh, man. It says open space for wine and flushy. Open space with gold All right, man. That's dope. Mass appeal. Send me more of those, man. Shout out to the subscriber for sending me that. Uh, if y'all noticed, I did a, uh, a couple months ago, I did a... Uh, uh, reaction to the interview, No Jumper, on Adam Deuce Deuce. Shout out Adam Deuce Deuce and No Jumper. But yeah, man, that's dope from the Suicide Boys. Another insight to who they really are. I mean, once again, September 7th, live stream, the new album, right here on Root Reviews. You don't have to go nowhere else. If you don't want to buy the album, I'll have the album here. We'll listen together. If it's trash, it's trash. If it's fire, it's fire, man. Anyways, man, it's your boy, OTC Ro. This is Root Reviews, man. I appreciate y'all rocking with your boy on the way to 10 thousand or fifteen thousand of them things. Anyway, man, I will see you when I see you. Go.